What's up Karate Nerds? I'm right now in Ireland for my brother Oliver's next professional MMA fight. And right now Oliver is actually in the bathroom because he needs to cut some weight so that he's ready to fight. Time for a refill! Oh, watch out. No, oh, for me. <laughs> How are you feeling? Not so good. Oliver's last fight ended in a spectacular fashion with a first round rear naked choke and everybody was so impressed that this time they actually put him on the very first spot for this fight card. Last time he was the very last fight so it's a big jump and there's a lot of expectations. So I'm just having all my fingers crossed that it works out in his favor. So, and voila! Release the butterfly from the cocoon! <laughs> Looking ripped! I feel like a spaghetti. <laughs> Yesterday, we did this amazing photo shoot where Oliver did these awesome traditional karate poses, plus, of course, some modern mixed martial arts poses, and they even invited me to be a part of the photo shoot. Okay, okay. <laughs> that was funny. Cool. <laughs> but now it's time to go down and check the weight. Oh, contract weight of 170. Contract weight of 170. Step on, sir. Yeah. 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 Time to check out the city. We just had a two hour nap at the room, getting a little bit hungry, and uh, I lost Oliver. What are you doing? Recycling. <laughs> <laughs> Save the planet. Thank you. It's a El Salvador natural process. I gotta say, this coffee is pretty amazing. What do you think? Cheers, mate. <laughs> wow, that is insane. Oliver, what is that? You tell me. <laughs> space needle. Space it's needle. A space needle. <laughs> uh, chipotle chicken. No, that's why we're here. Barbacoa, crispy fish, and. Uh, Braced pork heads. Ooh, all right, let's see how it tastes. <laughs> okay, so we're back at the hotel, and this might sound weird, but it's time for another weigh in. So we're gonna go to the arena where the fight is gonna be held and do a fake weigh in for the fans and the public, which just goes to show that MMA is not just a sport but also show business. Let's go. Yeah. Oliver, the future end camp. 171 pounds. So how did you feel about your opponent now that you had the face off? Well, it's always good to get a feeling, like feeling their energy and, and uh, you blow everyone up when you see them on TV and on pictures and stuff, but when, when you get to meet them in reality, everyone is much smaller and less harmful, and I felt uh, superior when we did the stare down. So it's a good feeling for tomorrow. <laughs> Oliver is doing one last training session before the fight and I'm gonna see if I can interview his coach and training partner to get some inside info. Yeah, Oliver is kind of special because the closer you get to the fight you kind of feel that he switches on and it's, yeah, it's like the pressure makes him even better, the techniques are getting harder, he's getting more vicious with every attack and it's 
yeah, it's quite unique in that way. There's not that many fighters that I can see that really performs better under pressure like that. I'm very much looking forward to tonight. He's, he's in great shape. I mean, really great shape. He's more like focused than I've seen him before. So I'm really excited for this fight. I really, I think he's going to do really, really good this fight. Mm, let's hope so. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. It's a few hours until we're leaving, and uh, I actually had a fan meet me up here at the hotel to hand me this Irish flag as a way of winning over the crowd uh, because they are huge in supporting their own fighters here and everyone who shows appreciation for the country so of course I don't want anyone to think I'm Irish so I also brought the Swedish flag and I will enter with one flag in each hand as a sign of respect to where I am but also where I come from the dojo and it's time for Oliver to break down the fight. Tell us what happened. I circled him into a spinning back fist so I Boom. knocked him out with my forearm and uh, when he went down I flew on him with strikes and the referee called it off so he was uh, considered a TK or technical knockout. Did you actually want to knock him out? Did you want to go for a submission? What were you thinking? How had you prepared for this fight? So our game plan was uh, first to enter a grappling exchange pretty early because uh, my advantage over him is one of one of them would be my endurance because he's a short and stocky fighter so he would we guessed he, was, he would be stronger than me and, and maybe more explosive, but yeah. I would have an endurance and stamina advantage. Yeah. So I would early enter a grappling exchange to make him tired yeah. and then uh, break away and, yeah. and from there uh, utilize my striking because right. I had a big reach advantage over him. Yeah. Uh, so when he, his arms were more tired, I could mm. uh, stay on the outside. So when the fight started, let's say you're over in that corner and yeah. I'm uh, over here. The first thing Oliver did was run straight to the center, right? Can you talk about that? So why? Why did you do that? This way? 
immediately. Yeah. So, yeah. so for me, the first battle is like initiating my pace. Okay. So I take the lead in the fight and you don't. So right. you have to follow my rhythm instead yeah. of the opposite. So that makes me more defensive when I see you taking the center of the yeah. cage. And I kind of make myself big and take space, which, yeah. which is pretty imposing. So I impose my will. So it's yeah. also like a psychological, psychological thing. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted his back against the cage. Yeah. Because since I had the reach advantage, yeah. if I get your back against the cage, I know you have only two ways to escape to yeah. the side, right? Because you can't back into the cage. Exactly. So that's uh, one of the reasons I wanted to to quickly uh, cross the cage. Yeah. So I put your uh, back against the fence. Right. And yeah. you started working him yeah. like you wanted to. Yeah. So we got into the grappling exchange uh, as was my plan. And I think you threw like four knees in his gut. Did they connect? Did uh, you feel it? I'm not sure it's 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 hard to know how effective they were because we were against the cage and I need whatever I, I found like his uh, his thighs and and his body yeah uh, um, and uh, like he didn't show any pain no. or so but I knew they were very hard and sharp yeah he actually hit me with a good knee in my gut. against the cage uh, yeah so okay. he was against the cage but yeah <laughs> And then I answered with one myself, but and I, and could, I couldn't feel it in the fight. But afterwards, when yeah. we were walking home to the to the hotel, I could feel ooh, <laughs> that one took got yeah. me good. Probably you had a lot of adrenaline during the fight, so yeah. it didn't register. Yes, right. Then he hit you with a hook as well. Yeah, so that was also pretty early on when I had him against the cage. I think we got space at some moment, yeah. and he came over the top, bam, and. I, and I think my guard was here, so he hit me right on the temple, and it's super sore still. I can't so. really see anything. No. It looks pretty okay. Yeah. And at one point, I think you fell on your butt and started scooting your way back towards the cage. So yeah. what was that all about? Yeah, so uh, I was throwing a uh, mawashigere, a roundhouse kick yeah. like this, but he stepped in at the same time, so okay. it was too short. And I fell down, and he, he fell on top of me, yeah. and what a lot of fighters do here is they trap your legs. So you kind of hook my leg and sit on them. Okay, so now I'm stuck here. So I didn't want that to happen. And as soon as we hit the ground, I started to scoot my back against the cage. So it, it was a few meters back. So I started getting to the cage. And when my back came here, I could use it as help of standing up. So if you keep pressuring on me now, yeah. I would use my overhook like this. And the fence, imagine the fence being here, I can use that to lean on and kind of stand up from here. Right, yeah, exactly. But then at, at some point you got separated again, it got yeah. some distance and you started striking a little bit now. Yeah. You did yeah. a switch kick to the head and you <laughs> threw a spinning kick, I think. Yeah, so yeah, we, we got away from the cage uh, somewhere between the third and fourth minute. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we, we came back into the middle and he started like pushing on, but yeah. I, I could see in his body language that he was pretty exhausted because he was yeah. kind of like dragging his, his legs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I tried to just use long strikes. I right. think I threw a switch kick, but yeah. it slipped off. Yeah. Uh, and, and then he kept coming forward. Yeah. So I circled off the cage because now my back was against the cage. Yeah. So I tried to circle out this way and yeah. he fought Followed me, yeah. which is a great way for me to set this up. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. And he's, I think he lunged in with yeah. a left hook at the same yeah. time. So I came inside of this exactly. and almost hit him with the uh, elbow. It was like your forearm. I yes. Guess. Yeah. Even if he hadn't stepped in, you would have connected with the fist. Yes. Yeah. So because your arms are so, so long. You guys yeah. should know Oliver's reach is insane. It's yeah. like the longest of all the fighters. Yeah. yeah. And uh, well, and then he fell down. Yeah, so he fell down yeah. and, and I just reacted. So I came like this, but he yeah. rolled over. So yeah, I so hit the ground with the first one. Yeah. And then this one came under here. Uh, yeah. And I think I hit him three times and then the referee stepped in. Yeah. And, and the rest is history. As they say. All right. Now that you've seen the breakdown and you heard everything about the fight, there's one last thing uh, I will tell you guys about uh, and it's the side of fight preparations that you don't see what's going on behind the cameras and all the praise and the cheers from the crowd and the highlights more or less uh, that the regular fan sees uh, and that is the struggles of the fight camp because a fight like this 
it's not just that you train hard and you go there and fight and you knock someone out and then you're the king of the world. Uh, that's only on the surface. But if you scratch on the surface and go deep beneath, the, the preparation starts month in advance. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a tough journey every time and there's different ways of handling it because it's different kind of stresses on your body. So obviously it's a physical stress preparing the conditioning and everything and uh, maybe you have been doing sparring, wrestling and stuff at, at your gym uh, but the exhaustion levels that you get in a fight they're like tenfold that you can ever gain in training because of all the, the tension and the nerves that you have going into this fight so everything just becomes so much more heavy and tough uh, so all the training needs to, to be uh, pushed to its limits uh, a, a weeks in advance to be ready for an event like this uh, and then you have the, the mental side of things right so it's a, it's a very big arena it's a big fight you have uh, an opponent with a with a big resume it's a dangerous guy you know and uh, you got the big crowd and I've heard from before that the Dublin events are always the loudest, the noises, the craziest and this arena it's shaped like an like an amphitheater which makes all the acoustics uh, bounce off the walls and like you can really feel the energy in this arena and these are all things you need to prepare for otherwise you might get shocked when you get there and freeze oh my god it's so loud you know and, and uh, are they cheering for me or for him you know all these thoughts come to you uh, so there's a lot of visualization done before where you can where I tr try to visualize the whole event the nights of the weigh-ins and and you know the walk out to the octagon and everything to make it as as uh, normal and and uh, and easy as possible come fight night and then during the, tr the training I mean we need to push ourselves uh, to make it as realistic as possible uh, without getting injured so during these preparations I had several injuries that kind of followed each other and this is pretty normal you have to train around it uh, but I had a very long camp this time because usually I have between one and two months to prepare for a fight since I'm always training I don't need much more time but I was supposed to fight in October last year now it's Feb February uh, and uh, that op uh, opponent uh, got caught by some kind of infection and had to pull out so I was already training for a fight then the fight got cancelled and I got an injury so I had to rehab and I had to go to the gym consistently and do my rehab training every day to get back on track right uh, so I spent hours and hours in the gym and then I got a new opponent uh, and a new fight camp starts right and now I had to work my cardio back up again because I've only been rehabbing this injury that I had uh, and the uh, new opponent means new tactics and, and all of this so we have to analyze him uh, and uh, <clears throat> I, I, I keep training in December and January so it's pretty far out right I need to schedule my training so I don't overtrain because it's so far in advance it's it's easy that you do too much when you're so far out because you're thinking of the fight all the time and you want to do your best to prepare um, and it's actually easier to overtrain than to undertrain right so uh, to keep the body in shape and not get any injuries back you need to be smart about what you're doing and eventually like every day is so much like the next like they you don't you don't even like do anything special because every every day looks more or less the same you're, you have the, your training schedule uh, I have my diet because I have a lot of pounds to lose before the weigh-ins and uh, right now uh, we have uh, very gray weather here uh, we don't have any sunlight and we had a very dark uh, long winter uh, and uh, you know all of these things combined uh, makes makes every day of training pretty rough and 
takes the joy out of it more or less <clears throat> because when something becomes a must like you have to diet that takes away my pleasure for eating food you have to train that takes away the love of martial arts because it's a must now i have to do it you know i i don't have the freedom to choose anymore um, and and uh, together with the injuries and the, the weather you know uh, it's kind of depressing after a while uh, so so it was a very tough and long fight camp and uh, usually i don't get pretty emotional about these things but now uh, i had a emotional roller coaster so to speak uh, during the last few weeks uh, leading up to the fight uh, and it was tougher for me than usual and um, so so getting the win like this was was a big relief uh, because now i have two first round finishes in bellator against two very seasoned guys and these were no easy fights i was the underdog coming in both in this one and my last one so i'm i've been fed to the sharks in my last four bouts now i would say uh, but now i'm i have two two wins uh, so i uh, i'm back on my winning streak and i want to really keep this up um, and like afterwards it felt so unreal because I had such such long time of training and preparing and the fight week in Dublin feels, feels like it's endless you know and the whole day of the fight you go around with these nerves your body my body is like this all the time because it's prepared it, it knows something is going on today uh, and then suddenly the fight's over and I can't really grasp the moment I don't really understand that I won I, I just go away like this yes I did it you know but but I can't really comprehend what's what's going on uh, the judge raises my arm and I get interviewed and then they ship me backstage I do a few more inter interviews and I come uh, back in the locker room and I'm like what happened is it already over because you feel like the fight is gonna be just as long and as tough as the training camp was, as the preparations. But suddenly it's just over. So everything is like empty. And I, I don't know, like, should I be happy? Should I, should, should, do I wanna do more, like to get everything out of my body from all the preparations? Uh, and then suddenly we're at home and, and everything is back to normal again. And I feel this kind of, void i'm just walking around like kind of relaxed i don't really know like what just happened the, the past couple of days from all this build up to to suddenly being over you know it's a weird feeling but i've had this before so so it's not uh, unfamiliar to me uh, but it's it, it was a much stronger feeling this time uh, and now the question starts to come like when will you fight again when when's the next one you know and i i don't really know what to say like like, I could go, uh, go in next Saturday and fight again. That's honestly how I feel. Uh, but I also feel like, man, I, I should really take a vacation now and, and like break my routine and do something else. Uh, and then, you know, get a new fight like before summer sometime. Uh, so we'll see what, what uh, Bellator holds uh, for me in the future. Um, they announced an event that's going to be in, um, in May uh, in London. So that's a possibility, uh, and I'm open to every, uh, everything, you know. But right now, I'm, I think I'm just gonna take this week and just, you know, not do very much except for being and uh, and uh, trying to comprehend what just happened and uh, the result of all of these weeks uh, that that came to this conclusion. Uh, and uh, I think in a few days I will realize what just happened and, and I actually won and uh, <laughs> I can look back at this and be, be satisfied and, and move forward on to the next one. So just want to say as a last thing, thank you guys for following and supporting. There was a lot of karate nerds out there that wrote to me during fight week. Actually a few of you came over, actually watched the fight and had a beer with me afterwards. <laughs> and. Uh, I'm very grateful and humbled uh, that so many of you are really supporting and following uh, both Jesse's and, and my own work. And uh, I can't be more thankful. So, Arigato gozaimashita.